Our scripture reading today comes from Paul's letter to Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of darkness, and against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's pre people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Thank you, God, for the inspiration of this word. Amen. Welcome to our Reflection on Sunday for August 24th. My name is the Reverend Michael Drew Davis, and what fun it is to, to go back over this scripture from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. Let's look at each of the tools one by one. Let's reflect on the conversation we started on Sunday, which is the difference between the combative language and the difference between the language of care. And just because I had so much fun sharing it, I'll share it with you one more time. So bear with my narrative. If you missed Sunday's sermon, I used Ephesians 6.12 as the opening narrative for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities and against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil and heavenly realms. And I, knowing me, I worked on the word for we wrestle not against it. And I used the narrative of how professional wrestling, professional wrestlers who exist in a world of a scripted stunt show are called to share an image of of conflict but also take care of each other within that imagery i really drew upon the necessity of the individuals taking care of each other within the stories that they share and if you exist in the world that i have in this and this fun narrative for me of professional wrestling, I've seen everybody that has gone from uh, being the ones who get in the ring and, and still have the amateur style of wrestling that you can really clearly see how they're taking care of each other to this garbage can wrestling where that they use chairs and trash cans and tables and visually try to hurt each other and... It's this whole drawn-out narrative that the people that are taking care of each other, even in the imagery of the Olympic style, believe it or not, they're also trying to do everything to take care of each other with all of the rakes and instruments of destruction, as Oliver Guthrie would say, even in the more trash can style of wrestling. But within that is this overlaying imagery of combativeness. And I see this overlaying image of combativeness so frequently when I see individuals go out to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, very recently, if you're, if you're a Foo Fighters fan, 
Um, very recently, our our dear friends. I don't know if I want to say their name or not. There is a visual, a very visual conservative sect of Christianity that goes out and holds banners at funerals and banners at music events to warn people who God hates. I, I'll share it that way. I don't want to name them. And uh, it, it's that imagery that I, I see so frequently, and not so much to, to that extreme, but I even see that imagery of combativeness within my own denomination as we proclaim who professes what identity and because they profess that identity, why they should not be allowed to be leaders and caregivers of the message of Jesus Christ. I see that combative language across the board all the way to the largest extreme of individuals that tell others who God hates all the way to us in very caring ways try to explain to people why that they're not allowed to be representatives of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now if we go through all of these weeks that I've been dealing with Ephesians, there, there has been some building blocks that I've been laying in place and there's a greater story coming. I need to take you through the journey before we get there. But there's been this journey of the willingness to get to places of conversation so that we can find the middle ground of unity in Jesus Christ. Weeks upon weeks ago, here we go, you've heard it before, so sing along with me again. Weeks upon weeks ago, we see Paul having this conversation that it's not just the individuals that have been on the lifelong journey, but it's also those that are beginning to find the door of grace and walk through it that everyone's voice has an importance in the journey of the gospel. And the Apostle Paul lays out that Jesus Christ is the centering, unifying focal point for all the conversations. And if we can step away from holding on to the power because we've been here the longest, and then we can empower those that have a new voice and a new vision, then the gospel of Jesus Christ can go to some new exciting places. Then we move into the next week. And it began, the Apostle Paul begins to build upon that the unifier of it all, Jesus Christ, his identity is built in love. And it's not the identity of the new that challenged us to look at things in different ways. And it's not the imagery of those that have all the power because they've been on the journey. But when we can find the center focal piece of love, we can do some extraordinary things as we share the reality of Jesus Christ with others. Then we grew even further. We began to look at the muscle structure of the body and we began to talk about, the Apostle Paul begins to talk about the entire body of Christ. And yes, there are muscles that do the hardest work, but there are smaller ligaments that support the muscles in such a way that it makes it possible for the muscles to do what they need to do. So the Apostle Paul, using the anatomy of the body, begins to say, yes, there are things that are big and strong and visible, but also the smallest thing has a level of importance in sharing this gift with others. Then we push it even further. We readdress when we looked at the Gospel of John as Jesus Christ begins to proclaim who he is, but he begins to begin to deal with the combative language of you're saying this, I'm afraid of what I am going to lose, but I am who I am. And there's people that fight against it because they don't want to lose what they're going to lose. And Jesus Christ is trying to teach and share this new identity so that he can look past importance, that he can work past notoriety, and that the gospel of Jesus Christ can truly begin to reach all souls. Then we get to this week, and there is combative language that exists in this, and the Apostle Paul continues to work against this combative language so that he can begin to show the tools that we can use, just like in the wrestling narrative, to care for each other even within the imagery of conflict. 
Let's look at each tool one by one. Let's look at the conflictive, the combative imagery of it and look about how it's also a tool of caregiving. Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. With the belt of truth. What does the belt do? <laughs> I'm working my way to a joke that may fall flat, but I'll just say it. The belt keeps your pants up. And what is the most sensitive, vulnerable area of a human body? Please deal with me as I stumble through this. It's what a, the belt holds up your pants and it's what your pants cover up and it's a very vulnerable area and it's an area man i'm trying to say this as sensitively as i can i may fall through the safety net as i try to do this but what holds our pants up is what also helps us cover the areas that we need to care for the most because it's also sometimes places where we get in the most trouble there I've said it now I can get away from that and we can keep going but it it holds us up in the most sensitive areas and it it holds up and covers and protects the most vulnerable areas for us now when we talk about buckling in the truth sometimes I've seen it used in the combative way that we buckle in with truth and we take that truth and we push that truth and we share that truth and we make that truth known even when we step on other people's toes. I've seen that happen. And that's not what I see as I break the scripture down. I see what I so sensitively and stumbled through trying to share with you. The belt isn't this thing that we strap on and hold everything in the place and we go out and stomp on toes. The belt is what holds up the things that protects and cares for the most sensitive, vulnerable areas of who we are. So if we use this belt as a tool, and if we use it in a tool that we're in this combative in in imagery, but we're still trying to care for each other, that belt becomes a challenge that we're going out and we're dealing with vulnerable things. We're going out and we're dealing with sensitive things. And we need to do it as caregivers. We need to protect the vulnerability. We need to care for the sensitive areas of being. We need to be the caregivers. Let's look at the next thing, the Breastplate of righteousness. Now, I tried to break this down in the sermon. I'm going to try it again. Breastplate is something that covers up your heart. If you're out in battle and the sword comes at you, it hits the breastplate. It, it stops it from penetrating your skin. It stops it from stabbing your heart. And it stops your heart. It protects your heart from stopping so that you can keep going. All right, that's what a breastplate does. It protects the heart. We need to use that imagery. We're not combating with something that we don't want to touch our hearts, but we, we want to protect the heart and we want to protect the heart of others. And the only way we can do that within the sense of being sensitive caregivers to the greater community is by doing something that actually strengthens the heart, that strengthens the spirit, that strengthens the soul. A breastplate strengthens the heart because it protects it from harm. And if we use this tool and this imagery as something that protects us from harm, that strengthens our heart, we are looking to be the caregivers that strengthen the hearts of others so that their hearts can grow and their hearts can become stronger. And our hearts can grow and our hearts can be stronger because of the narrative that we're going through with them and we continue to show peace in very beautiful ways. So we're we're past the breastplate of righteousness. Now let's let's I love this one. And with your feet fitted, your shoes, 
with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Now, <laughs> you think I had a hard time talking about what a belt did. Hang on. <laughs> Let's talk about what our shoes protect us from, and specifically in the time period for the people that the Apostle Paul is talking to. One of the things that individuals had to do, they had to walk. They didn't have cars, they didn't have Fords or Lincolns or Chevys to get them everywhere that they wanted to go. They had to walk, man. They had to take their cattle, their crops, their livestock with them. And if you're taking cattle and livestock, they got to take care of the business. And there's poop everywhere. And what do shoes do? <laughs> when you step in some poop, it protects your feet. Let's use that narrative in the narrative of care. Bear with me. Strange analogies today, gang. But just bear with me. There's a lot of times we step in poop when we're trying to be caregivers. There's times that we need forgiveness. There's times that our dear friends have stepped in poop and they can't get their feet out of it. And we need to become the caregivers to help them be set free from it. And if we look at what our shoes do in this narrative, yeah, they protect us against the poop in our lives. But also, if we use that imagery for ourselves, how do we fix it to the people that God's calling us to take care of? And we are the ones that help them get out of their poop. And we just need to hold on to that reality. Because it's not combative. We're not slinging poop at each other. And we're not trying to dig up the places where people get stuck and people are stuck and they're hurting. We're trying to pull them out of those places where they're stuck and they're hurting so that they know that there is care that exists for them. They know that there is something there that is there to care for them. And the reality of it all, we're not called to sling it. We're called to help people out of it the tools of caring then they then this is where it gets fun take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit oh no i skipped ahead too far let's let, i forgot the shield we need the shield so take up the shield of faith which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the even evil one take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god Okay, let's look at the shield. The shield is very singular, especially if we look at it in this imagery of the armor of God that we're called to put on. It's very singular. It's something that we use to cover ourselves up with so that things can't break through and and help us and, and hurt us. Things can't break through and hurt us. And... I'll share with you, there's times that we need to put our shields down because, at least in my narrative, it's the bumps and the bruises that have helped me become the strong person I am right now. And it's not the things that I've shielded away from me and protected myself from. The shield is a very important thing because if we don't shield ourselves against bad things, we are going to be direly hurt. That's reality. And there has to be times that we're willing to put our shield down so that we can feel the aches and pains that other people will feel. We're not called to shield ourselves from experiencing what other people are suffering from because when we begin to experience the aches and pains, we grow more, we grow past our own personal understanding and we understand more deeply what it means to be caregivers. So sometimes we need to set down the shield so that we can experience the aches and pains and know how to show grace to other people. Then comes the sword. Let's deal with the sword for a minute. The sword is the word of God. Now on Sunday I used this phrase and I kind of regretted it but I don't. There's too many times that if we don't really take our time to really study, to truly understand what we're sharing, we go out and we share a really bad and harmful theology with others. 
Let's go back to the, the, the sign holders. I haven't read in the Bible anywhere where it says who God hates. And when you go out and tell someone that God hates you, how are you going to win them over the gospel? One of the things that happened, and I referenced the Foo Fighters, I didn't carry the story through. The Foo Fighters, Dave Grohl, um, I, I, um, Pat Schmears, I used to could name the band members. I'm not so good at it right now. But they, they were being protested by the sign holders. And they got... They they made a parade, <laughs> and within all the sign holders, they played songs that talked about what it means to to care for each other. The song that was in the video was a BG song. You should be dancing, and as we think about the places that we truly interact with other people, that we take the time to truly share responsibility uh, like the scripted stunt show that's wrestling it, when people dance together they're doing something that's very peaceful and each person has a part in that dance and it's a shared experience and think about fighting the combative language of who God hates with the language of let's have more shared experiences so that we can learn from each other that's when we use our swords properly. That's when we use our swords properly. And I've seen too many times that the sword has been used wrong to conquer other people. But Jesus Christ did not come to this world to condemn the world, but he came to the world so that the world through him might be saved. Paraphrasing John 3.17. I want us to hold on to all these tools and I want us to remember that, you know, we step in our own poop and we use the combative narrative to things and we end up hurting each other and we end up hurting ourselves. And the Apostle Paul isn't calling us to use the, the combative language. He says it very clearly in Ephesians 6.15 with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Let's hold on to that imagery from the gospel of peace. Let's celebrate the reality of the love of Jesus Christ. And instead of going out to be conquerors of the world, let's go out to be the caregivers of others. That's our reflection on Sunday today. My name is the Reverend Michael Drew Davis. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God is love. Amen. We'd like to have the opportunity to get to know you. Please email us at ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And if you've been enjoying our services online, please email us. Please say hello. Again, that's ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And also, if you'd like to give to our church, please go to northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Again, that's northcoastumc.org, and click on the Give button. Thank you for joining us.